Uh, so at the UN Climate Conference in Copenhagen in 2009, the participants agreed that two degrees Celsius is the maximum tolerable increase in uh, global average temperatures above pre-industrial conditions. The small island nations wanted one and a half degrees because at one and a half degrees they're above water. At two degrees they're probably submerged. We are today on a trajectory to closer to five or six degrees. The next big climate conference uh, is in Paris in uh, December. And the way it's shaping up, it looks like emerging from that will be voluntary non-binding pledges for most of the countries that add up to a pathway to about three degrees. Three degrees would have catastrophic consequences in terms of sea level rise, desertification, and many other issues. So one of the things we've been working on at the law school at the Sabin Center for Climate Change Law is ways to uh, legal tools that the U.S. could use to increase the ambition that it has for uh, greenhouse gas reductions. But we've also been focusing on what are the legal techniques to uh, force governments and private companies to prepare for the climate change that is happening, regardless of our best efforts. One of those tools is the National Environmental Policy Act, the federal statute that requires environmental impact statements for major federal actions that could affect the environment. Next week, we're hosting a workshop at the law school of people who prepare these environmental impact statements to try to come up with, and a lot of state and federal regulators, to come up with protocols for how to do this analysis so that if you're building a project, you can anticipate and prepare for the climate change that is coming. Another tool is the uh, securities disclosures laws under the uh, SEC and, and state laws, and we've been pushing that. And we've also used the state uh, utility regulatory processes. We intervened in Con Ed's most recent rate increase, uh, brought in climate scientists from, uh, from Columbia uh, to demonstrate the climate perils that the uh, Con Ed electrical and natural gas system are facing and leading to uh, an agreement and an order where they're going to uh, engage climate scientists to come with, up with more fine-grained projections about future uh, climate change and then prepare their system to, uh, to adopt to those projections. So those are a few of the things we're doing at the law school in uh, connection with what we see coming up in the future and what will and will not happen in Paris.